synanthropic animals are wild animals that benefit from their interactions with human altered environments. They might love our homes or our rubbish or our artificially altered environments, but domestic animals don't count. So here are some of the best examples of animals that thrive around humans. And as a bonus, we're going to focus on Australian animals. Well, kind of Australian, because our first animal is introduced, the cane toad. But their introduction actually illustrates the point perfectly that cane toads thrive around humans. While humans are of course responsible for introducing cane toads to Australia, did you know we're also partly responsible for how well cane toads have spread across northern Australia? This is because cane toads thrive in a suburban environment. Cane toads love nestling in freshly watered lawns, although their skin is much hardier than your average anurin. And they love the churned up soil of disturbed environments that brings moisture and bugs to the surface. All of these are things humans have inadvertently gifted the cane toad, which toads have exploited to help them spread across the northern portion of the continent. Of course, there are some negative impacts of human habitation on cane toads, such as swimming pools, which a toad can easily get in, but cannot as easily get out, kids hunting them with cricket bats and tennis rackets, and drivers with toad rage swerving to kill them. But on the whole, our alterations of the Australian environment help toads thrive in suburbia and can help them survive in places and in seasons where they might not otherwise. When thinking about non-domesticated animals that thrive around humans, probably a few birds come to mind. The silver gull, or what Australians just call the seagull, is a great example. Seagulls are amazing scavengers. For birds that in the wild eat fish, squid and krill, they have adapted remarkably well to refuse. Humans are fantastic at generating waste, and where that waste is collected, you find seagulls. Another bird that you find in many major cities is the pigeon. To me, pigeons have always seemed out of place in cities. How can a delicate seeming dove thrive in a concrete jungle? But actually it's the concrete that they love. City pigeons descended from pigeons that roost along the rocky cliffs and crevices of North Africa, Europe and Asia. So tall buildings made of concrete, stone or metal are actually great proxies for the cliffs that pigeons are naturally drawn to. They're also not picky with their food, which helps around humans. But the Australian synanthropic bird that might surprise you the most is Australia's answer to the trash panda, the bin chicken. The Australian ibis has a long curved beak that is fantastically adapted to searching out food in shallow wetlands. But the ibis isn't too bothered about what it eats. So in Australia, it's put that long curved beak to use by foraging in bins for humans' rubbish. These birds thrive in the biggest cities in Australia, particularly Sydney, where it's a common sight to see ibises perched on bins scavenging for scraps. This of course has led to the affectionate moniker, bin chicken. Bats have a rocky relationship with humans, and Australia is home to one of the largest bats in the world, the grey-headed flying fox, which is part of a family of bats, sometimes called fruit bats. Flying foxes are abundant in suburban East Coast Australia. They're definitely synanthropic, but that's because humans are driving bats into urban areas. Flying foxes eat nectar and fruit, but many of the nectar-bearing trees they normally rely on have been cleared. Fruit bats are haphazard, opportunistic nomads. That means they migrate to wherever the food is plentiful without necessarily following the same route every year. But with trees in the countryside being felled, this has made cities with their botanical gardens and their backyards full of fruit trees enticing places for flying foxes to roost. This isn't necessarily a good thing for the bats, or for humans. For flying foxes it means that they're being forced to live in areas where they're thought of as fruit thieves, as a pest. Areas where nets, wires, fences and pollution all do harm to them. And for humans it means that those figs you have growing in your backyard may not make it to ripeness. But we also know that bats carry viruses that, from time to time, can spread to humans. Lastly, we could talk about rats or cockroaches or spiders, but wouldn't you rather talk about kangaroos? 
That's right. While many synanthropic animals are urban, kangaroos are synanthropes that benefit from human-altered environments outside of cities. The kangaroo is an animal whose synanthropy doesn't extend to the scavenging human rubbish. But kangaroos love grass. And if there's one thing humans do as well as creating rubbish, it's clearing land for agriculture. While kangaroos prefer to stay out of cities, they still benefit hugely from a human-altered environment around country towns and regional centres. Golf courses, parks and farmland all create the perfect pastures for a large, grass-eating herbivore that can leap fences in a single bound. So that's a few of Australia's synanthropic animals. There are heaps of other birds, bats, bugs and rats that fit into this category too. But let me know if there are any other different synanthropes around where you live. Thanks for watching.